Hello everyone, this is Victor Dantas here from the Zero to Hero Academy. Uh, over the years, we have helped multiple professionals uh, either get into the power platform market or some of the seasoned professionals within the industry up their game within the low code technologies. And we are here to announce that we have a special program coming up between March 19th and May 30th. This is the Power Pages and AI Zero to Hero Mentorship Program. Join us, click on the link, access the lessons, you know how we do it, live lessons on Teams, and then the recorder goes up to YouTube and you can follow if you are in different time zones, but you pref we prefer it to join it live. Connect, ask questions, so go ahead, invite your colleagues, your dad, your mom, your grandpa, let's everybody join the fun, all right? We'll see you then, take care. Did it go okay? It's, it was good. It was good. I had a little bit of internet connection uh, problems, but overall we we uh, we got it done. We had uh, someone from the crowd donate their uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, so we were oh. able to carry <laughs> to carry oh. on with the presentation. So that that was that was good. Oh, that it is so good. good. That is a bit of audience participation, right? Got love yes, that. that's it. That's it. <laughs> That's all we need. So I don't know. Um, I think um, what's his name? Arpit is gonna join us soon. Here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I told him uh, a little bit more. I gave him a, a, a bit more direction about the time of the session because he was yeah. trying to figure out. It's so crazy this time around. Uh, there are so many uh, time zone uh, clock changes. And it's it's hard to combine them all. I know that Outlook will do it for you, but for some reason it wasn't clear uh, for him. But uh, he'll be here soon. Who who else is in this call? Let's see. Doug Douglas is on. Hey Douglas. <laughs> Victor, how are you? I am doing good. It's so good to see you here, my friend. Yeah. yeah. Are you coming to London? I am. That's the plan. Okay. You know, I'm I'm gonna I'm in Denver now, so I'll go back home, stay there for about a week, and then uh, if my ladies allow me, I'll go, I'll go to. <laughs> your, I'll go your to, four to your four strong ladies. <laughs> that's right. That's all right. I was telling a friend here, I got married once, and I have four ladies in my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm planning on on going. Yeah. Are you attending? Yes, yes. I mean, it's in my backyard, so this time I need to pop in and uh, All right. see, All right. uh, see your Yeah, the, the session. <laughs> I, I'm doing. I've, I've been doing a lot of uh, generic sessions on. Um, you know ai and all that but I, i'm gonna do one of my favorites so i did a, a power pages uh, we call it pro dev more like liquid development and things like that i did the one that's basically my most viewed video uh on youtube so i'm doing one that it's a hybrid of ai and in liquid development liquid, so I'm okay. hoping, yeah so i'm hoping that one will be good as well yeah 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 cool. that'll be good i'll Let plead me. with your ladies but i'll speak to them personally to release you so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes yeah it's gonna be a good one i, I try I'm trying to connect uh, our pit here, so let's see if he's gonna get the call because we are right on time. Let's see, let's see. Oh, he's here. He's here. Hey, Arpit, Be can you hear us? Uh, I see that you're talking, but I cannot hear you. I'm not sure who else is. Are you able to hear him, uh, Cheryl? No, I, I can't, connect again. can't see him on the call. I thought he was. I saw his name pop up for a second. Yeah, only the three of us I can see now. 
yeah, yeah. I've, I've had real problems with teams lately i had to had to sign out of teams and sign into classic to be able to get on properly it's um <laughs> it's not been my friend recently <laughs> yeah so yeah let's let's maybe give him a few more minutes and uh if he doesn't connect we can potentially postpone it yeah. but I spoke with him yesterday and we were all set. So hopefully everything's all right. Yeah. So Douglas, where, where are you based exactly? Are you in London or somewhere around it? No, I'm outside London. I'm in Essex. So that's about uh, 40 miles out of London. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good, good transport though from Essex into London. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I use the aid to share. What, why are you? Based? Are you in the UK yourself? Yeah, I am. But I'm in um, I'm in Herefordshire in the west. Oh, okay, in, yeah. in in the middle of nowhere. I am literally. Yeah, I know that. So yeah. it, it takes that's me about four hours to, to get to London. Oh, hey, Arpit. Hey. The man I can is hear here. you. On mute, Arpit. Oh, sorry. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Hi, Richard. Hey. Hi, Sabian. Lovely to see yeah. you. Hi. Same here, same here. <laughs> That's awesome to see you. So we had a, we had a, a reduced, we have a reduced number today. A lot of the people that participates in this call from the US, they are here. <laughs> <laughs> they are, they are here uh, at the conference in the US. So uh, it's going to be a smaller number, at least for today. I think Thursday will pick up. But anyways, um, thank you so much for donating your time. As you can see, I'm somewhat on the road here using the, <laughs> the portable studio, uh, but it, it's nice to, hey, come on, come on. <laughs> We're doing a live session. Have you met Molly? She no, hello, Molly. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. And so, oh, wow. Well, uh, uh thank you arpit for donating your time and uh, your brains uh, to this uh, initiative i'm um, i'm looking forward to to meeting you in person finally you know in in a couple of weeks uh same here, been, same here. Been, way, been way too long so it's gonna be fun to to meet you in person but anyhow take it away the, the floor is yours my friend same here victor same here excited to see you in london Nice, nice. Yes, I'll see you right. also for the first Me time. Me too. We'll have we'll have a meeting of all of us together. <laughs> come on, come Yay. on, John. You you have you have to ask Eric to give you funds, John, so you can come to London with us. <laughs> Let's go. Yes, a big great. party. <laughs> <laughs> all right, friends. I don't want to take more of our pit's time. Uh, I this this one session, I think it's gonna be a hit. I mean, like every other one, but. You know, uh, I've I've been getting so many complaints around uh, the user stories mm -hmm. between uh, Azure B2C and Power Pages. So I think this session will clarify a lot of things for so many people. So awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Victor. Let me share my screen then. So I turn off my camera now. Is it fine? Like just to save the bandwidth because I don't want to, you know, the screen should be loading, loading, and loading. Yes, I can't. I can't see yeah, it. It's yet. okay. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it may okay, be a just... team's problem. Got you yeah, now. I can see the screen now. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, see you now. Can you see my screen? Yes, that's lovely. Thank you, Arpit. Perfect. All right. All right. So, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everyone from wherever time zone you are uh, joining this mentorship program. First of all, thanks to Victor who organizing this zero to zero to hero power apps, power pages, and AI mentorship challenge. So if anyone has missed out uh, the previous uh, sessions and the mentorship programs, then uh, visit Victor's uh, YouTube channels. So I think he's uh, regularly uploading all the videos of all the past sessions. 
So thanks again for all the community uh, Power Pages heroes, uh, Cyril, uh, Francisco, Neil, and everyone who is participating in this challenge. So thanks for that. A bit uh, brief introduction about me. Uh, my name is Arbish Srivastava. Uh, I am three times Microsoft MVP awarded. I am four times Microsoft certified trainer. And I am currently working as a power platform expert in Cap Germany, Sweden. Uh, I've been working with uh, Dynamic 365C and Power Platform from last almost 15 years now. And uh, I've been working in various areas, Azure DevOps, Power Apps, Power Pages. So Power Pages is one of my key area where I contribute a lot. Um, I, I, I love to share the knowledge on the Power Pages because that is, that is one of the component where I started working on the Power Platform since the ADX Studio was there. So that is one of my, uh, you know, most lovable topic. And uh, I'm also leading India Dynamic 365 group. I'm also the ambassador of Power Community. I've been sharing knowledge since 2019 with the community through, you know, a lot of ways. Uh, I'm writing blogs. Uh, I'm a speaker, regular speaker, and uh, I've been giving training from last couple of years. And soon I'm going to be the author of my book. So that is going to be a release in June 2024. So this is uh, one of the most challenging work that I've been doing from last one year. So I'm eagerly waiting to you know release my book. I know like this is not on the power pages. Probably next time I'll try to you know write a book on the power pages. But it's all about uh, you know the opportunity. I got the opportunity to. Uh, right on the power apps. So this is uh, the book which contains 15 chapters that covers everything related to the Canvas app, Power Platform, Model Driven app. So just stay tuned on the LinkedIn and on, on my and on my social media account. So I will keep on posted when it is going to be released. Yeah. Well, if I talk about the agenda, uh, as you know, like I'm going to talk about uh, you know, as you already B2C in the power pages, as Victor mentioned, uh, there are a lot of questions related to the, you know, as you already B2C setup, because earlier it was not one of the recommended way of authentication in the power pages. So people or you know, the organization have started using the local authentication. Then Microsoft, you know, uh, made this as a recommended authentication way uh, to the power pages. So people started uh, you know thinking about the way how you can migrate the existing you know uh, identity providers like user uh, local authentication to the azure ad b2c or uh, what how, how how smooth you can do the setup of the azure ad b2c so because azure ad b2c setup is a very straightforward way i know like you know there are a lot of articles uh, are there on the internet you can just step by step follow their instructions and you know set up everything and nowadays i think there is a there is a automatic way available so that that set up everything in the uh, azure portal you don't need to even log into the application and everything is you know uh, done through the power pages studio but there are a couple of uh, you know business requirement uh, specifically related to uh, the existing power pages side because I know, lo, lo, I know like there are a lot of organizations and the customer who have been using Power Pages sites and uh, using their existing uh, identity providers like local authentications. They already have the existing customer and now they are, you know, thinking about a way how you can, you know, invite them to the Azure ADB to see how you can migrate them, how you can customize the Azure ADB to see sign up or sign in page, same like the local authentication. So these kind of question I, I heard a lot on the community, uh, you know, uh, channel as well. Uh, but in this session, I'm going to share what I have learned from, uh, from my past couple of power pages implementations. Uh, there might be possible that I, I missed uh, bits, missed something. So if you have experienced something uh, new in the uh, Azure AD B2C, you can also share. So it's not kind of uh, one sided session. It's kind of learning uh, 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 session. So if you if you know anything, uh, you just share it to me. I can also you know learn from you. So this is just a you know knowledge sharing from my side, whatever I have learned. So I, I just wanted to first discuss about the fundamentals of Azure AD B2C before jumping into directly how to set up uh, the B2C integration with the Power Pages. 
So I'll talk about Azure AD B2C and its uses. And then uh, there are various terminologies uh, and the resources you use it while setting up the Azure B2C, like you know, redirect URL, client IDs, issuer. So sometimes you don't know about those terminology and you just randomly set up the things. But the thing gets uh, challenging when you face any issues. So I'll talk about few terminologies that we usually use. And then I'll talk about how you use the Azure AD B2C with Power Pages. And then I'll show you the demonstration of two use cases. One is for the new portal uh, customer, uh, for the new customers, and the second is for the existing customer. Day two, that is on the 16th of May, uh, I'm going to discuss about four more requirements. Uh, that is how to set up the portal authentication process for existing B2C users, how you can migrate the user from other IDPs to Azure AD B2C, and then how you can customize the Azure AD B2C default pages layout. And then we have some additional properties uh, like B2C connectors, language translations, and then we'll talk about the licensing as well. So this is how I distributed my uh, agenda for two days. So first, if we talk about what is Azure AD B2C, so Azure AD B2C basically it's a uh, cloud-based business to customer identity and the access management service. Okay, so there are two main things uh, that it uh, provides. The first is identity and the second is access, right? So as you know, like there are many uh, applications uh, in the world who are uh, running on the, on, on the web, right? So they need the authentications, they need uh, to manage their users so that they can, uh, so that they can, uh, you know, securely uh, log into the applications. So Azure AD B2C is one of the, you know, a way uh, business to customer identity access management service that is provided by the Microsoft Azure. And it is basically designed to help the businesses manage their customer identities and access to their applications and the services, right? So this is uh, in this picture, you can see like the customer can either use their uh, local accounts, their, you know, their personal emails or their social media accounts. So there are a lot of flexibilities are there to log in to their applications, right? They can even uh, use their government IDs as well. From the business perspective, you can create the customer facing applications. You can create the APIs. You can do the analytics, right? So how many users are logging uh, on the monthly basis from the reporting perspective, you can do the analytics as well. You can integrate that with other systems as well. And the one of the major advantage of using Azure AD B2C is, uh, you know, it provides the white label registration and login experience. What is white label registration? That means you can customize uh, the branding of the login sign up pages and the profile page based on your organization branding, right? So that I'm going to talk about in the next uh, mentorship session. But today I'm going to discuss about the authentication mechanism, right? Some other advantage of using Azure AD B2C is it is a capable of supporting millions of users and billions of authentications per day today. And it takes care of scaling and safety of the authentication platform monitoring and the automatically handling of threats as well. So there are some most common threats that usually website face. It actually helps you to handle uh, those threats. So one is the denial of service. So sometimes if, uh, if, if, if any malicious attempts to disrupt the availability of the Azure AD uh, services, it helps you to protect that. Password spray, so cyber attacks where threat actors attempt to gain unauthorized access by, you know, systematically trying a few commonly used passwords. So this is one of the most common attack that uh, the hackers do. So it actually protects from that kind of attacks as well. The brute force attacks is the cyber attacks where threat actors attempts to gain unauthorized access by systematically trying many different combination of user and password, unless or until they find the correct credential. So these kind of one of these are one of the most common threats from which the Azure AD B2C protects your authentication. Azure AD B2C is built on the same technology, uh, same as the Microsoft Entra ID. So in a while you will see like how you how you create the Azure AD B2C. So you 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 need to log into the Microsoft Azure AD account only in order to create the Azure AD B2C uh, tenant. So basically it is built on the same technology as the Microsoft Entro ID, but for a different purpose and it is separate service. OK, because as you as you learned from the previous slide, like it, it act, actually act, act as an identity as a service. 
right? So it allows businesses to build the customer facing web applications and then allow anyone to sign up and sign into those applications without any restriction on the user accounts, right? So this is what this is one of the fundamental knowledge about the Azure AD B2C, how it works and who who actually uses the Azure AD B2C. So B2C, Azure AD B2C is basically used by you know, the businesses or the individuals who wish to you know, authenticate end user to their web or the mobile application using their wide level authentication solutions. It can, it can also be used for the authorization purposes, for example, like API resources by the authenticated users. So Azure AD B2C is designed to be used by the IT administrators and the developers. And overall, Azure AD B2C is used by the organization of all sizes and across uh, you know, the various industries to provide the secure, scalable and customizable authentication solution for their customer facing application. So one of the major advantage of using Azure AD B2C that you can customize it as per your business need or, or, or customize your branding as per your organization need. Now there are various resources that uh, helps uh, helps you set up uh, the Azure AD B2C with uh, any of your custom applications. Since we are talking about in the context of Power Pages, so whenever you integrate the Power Pages with the Azure AD B2C, you, you get to know there are a lot of resources, a lot of terminologies gets used, right? So the resources uh, is basically offer uh, the capabilities to enable the organization to manage user identities, authentication, authorization securely. And each resources in the B2C plays a significant role in enabling organization to build secure and user friendly customer facing application, right? So overall, the resource, the key role of the resources is to you know set up the authentication. So you can imagine the power pages is a client and uh, sorry, the system one or the client one application and the Azure AD B2C is the client two and the uh, different application. So how the two application interacts with each other, that is possible using the Azure AD B2C resources. OK, now what are those resources? The first one is the Azure AD B2C tenant. OK, now what is Azure AD B2C tenant? So in the Active Directory B2C, a tenant basically represent your organization. OK, so for example, like I am working in an ABC corporation and uh, I just wanted to set up uh, Azure B2C uh, for that particular organization so that Azure AD B2C tenant will be specific to that ABC organization. Yeah, but it depends like you can create multiple tenants as well. Sometimes uh, you can create the tenants uh, for the different power pages or the different power platform environments as well. So it depends on the organization need, but overall a tenants basically represent your organization and each Active Directory B2C tenants is distinct and separate from other Azure AD B2C tenant. OK, so different organization will have a different Azure AD B2C tenant. And another important thing is that an Azure AD B2C tenant is also different from the Microsoft Entra tenant, right? So both are two different uh, applications and the services that you that you already have, right? So in the demo, we will quickly have a look at it, like how the Azure AD B2C tenant is different from the Microsoft Android tenant. The second component, no. So some some most important thing about the B2C tenant is that you can create up to 20 tenants per subscription, and this limit helps protect against threats to your resources, such as denial of services attacks and enforced in both the Azure portal and the underlying tenant creation API. So there are some sort of restrictions and some sort of uh, you know numbers you need to remember before using the Azure AD B2C tenant. So you can create 20 tenants for subscription. By default, each tenant can accommodate a total of 1.25 million objects. So objects is nothing, it's just an account and the application that you're using within your tenant. But you can increase this limit to 5.25 million when you add and verify a custom domain. However, if you create your tenant before September 2022, this limit doesn't affect you and your tenant will retain the size allocated to it creation that 50 million subjects. All right. And the Azure account that has been assigned at least the contributor role within the subscription or the resource group within the subscription is required. So you need to have at least contributor role in order to access these uh, resources. 
Another important component is uh, the resources is the Azure AD B2C directory. So Azure AD B2C directory is nothing. It's just a storage which store the user's credentials, user profile data and your application registrations, right? So in a short while, we're going to see like how you can create the users, how you can set up the profile and how you can set up the applications if you have to integrate the Power Pages side with the Azure AD B2C. So this is also one of the key resources of Azure AD B2C. Application registration. So you can register your web, your mobile application and your any native application with Azure AD B2C to enable identity management. So whenever you have to integrate your Power Pages site with the Azure AD B2C, you need to register your application first. So if you have five, if you have five Power Pages site, you must have five different application registered uh, in the Azure AD B2C, right? Because each application represent, uh, each external application represent an application inside the Azure AD B2C. Okay. User flows. So user flows is uh, basically uh, what kind of uh, authentication flow you're going to use in your application, whether it's a power based application or basically it's a custom application. So whether you're going to use the sign in sign in flow or you're going to use only sign in flow or you're going to use the password reset flow. So these are the user flows in the Azure AD B2C, right? So th there is nothing new in that. It's just a simple uh, password registration page, password, password reset page, uh, sign in page and the sign up page. But in the Azure AD B2C terminology, we call it as a user flow, right? So it decides that how your authentication mechanism or how, how your user is going to be uh, you know, is going to be flow through your application, either through the sign up, either through the, you know, sign in flow or the password reset flow. And few more important uh, uh, terminologies are the issuer. So first is issuer is the responsible for issuing security token. So as the name suggests, it, it basically issues the security token, which contains the claims about the authenticated user during the authentication process, right? So as I told you, uh, Azure AD B2C is basically used for the identity and the access management. So whenever any external application request or send the username or password as a request, it basically verifies the credentials and issues the token. So token is basically represent that the user verification is done and user is allowed to access the resources, right? So this is all about issuer. Client ID, so we will use the client ID term a lot whenever we will integrate the Azure AD B2C with Power Pages. So as, as I told you in the previous uh, slide, like you need to register an application for your Power Pages site or any external application. So whenever you registered an application for a particular Power Pages site, it gives you the unique client ID, which also called as the application ID. That basically helps you to uniquely identify your application whenever you are integrating your authentication process. Yeah, so whenever portal or power pages site makes the request to the Azure AD tenant, you always send the client ID in your URL. So I will show you that as well, right? So if you don't send the client ID, the Azure AD B2C will not be able to recognize from which authorized source or from which application this request is coming from. Yeah. And the third one is a redirect UI. So whenever your verification is done, so for example, your application is making a request with the uh, Azure AD B2C, your verification is done and uh, you get the token, then Azure AD B2C redirect uh, the user to the URL, which is given in the redirect URL section, right? So it's basically a callback URL or the URL which Azure AD B2C will send the authentication response after the successful authentication. Right. So why I'm talking about these kind of terminology? Because whenever we we will set up the Azure AD B2C with uh, Power Pages, we will we will hear this term a lot. Now there are basically three types of accounts we use. So Microsoft Entry ID account. So in the Active Directory, there are basically uh, different different types of accounts we use, and each account serve a different purpose and the role within our organization identity and access management framework. So whenever you will log into the Azure Active Directory, uh, you will find there are there are basically three kind of Microsoft Entry ID accounts you can create. The first kind of account is the work account. 
OK, so that is also called the organization account as well. So work account typically refer to the user identities associated with the employees or the members of an organization. And these accounts are used for accessing organization internal resources like the emails, document and the internal applications, right? So it is nothing. It just an uh, it just an uh, uh, email address or the user account of the internal employees. OK, so if you if you understand that with the real world example, imagine you are working for a company called ABC Corporation and you work account usually in the form of email address called John dot doy at the red ABC Corp dot com. So it is basically the user account set up for the internal organization and it gives you access to the company resources such as corporate network, email system, internal con collaboration tools like Microsoft Teams and all. The second type of account that you can create is the guest account. OK, and we also call it as Azure AD B2B. It's basically for the business to business. And this kind of account is basically grant access to resources within an Azure AD tenant they do not belong to. Means these accounts are typically used for collaboration purpose. So for example, like if you have some partners or if you have some contractors who want to temporarily access your uh, Azure AD uh, resources, then you can give them access through the guest account by creating the guest account, right? So you have heard like you you can share the the the, the canvas app with the uh, the external user by creating the guest account as well. So if we understand that with the real world example, let's say you create you have a organization ABC Corp and you collaborate with a partner organization called XYZ, and ABC Corp invites employees of XYZ to collaborate on a project by granting them guest access to the specific resource with their, their Azure AD tenant. So the XYZ employees can use their own Active Directory credentials called jane.smith at the xyzinc.com to sign in your Azure AD uh, resources, right? So this is kind of guest account. The third kind of account that you create that we are going to use that is Azure AD B2C account that is consumer account, right? So consumer account basically in the context of Azure AD B2C refer to users identity created and managed for customers. So this is basically for the external customer, the end users that is external to your organization. And these accounts are used for accessing consumer facing applications or services provided by the organization. Right, and they can simply use uh, their personal email address as you can see, like customer at the red gmail.com. So, there the customer can use their uh, preferred email address or preferred identity called social media and all in order to log in in your application. Right, so these are the different kind of account. Why I'm talking about this because sometimes you have to create this Azure AD B2C account using Microsoft Graph APIs or using Power Automates as well. Right. Because not always you create this Azure AD B2C manually. Sometimes you have to automate the process. You have to interact with the Microsoft Graph API. You need to write the Power Automate or whatever custom code you are writing. You have to create those accounts in the Active Directory automatically. So whenever you are going to create an account, you get three choices. The first is work account, second is guest account, and third is the consumer account. So you should aware about that, right? Now, how the Azure AD B2C works in the power pages. So as you know, like in the power pages, uh, I'm not going to discuss about uh, the security and uh, the other identity provided in the power pages, but at a very high level, power pages support two kind of uh, authentications. The first is local and the second is external, right? So local authentication is basically it stores your uh, username and the password, your uh, identity information within your dataverse in the encrypted format and the external identity provider where data work doesn't store your identity information. It is stores in the uh, different repository. So for example, like Active Directory, Azure AD B2C, Facebook, Twitter, Google. So these kind of external identity providers Microsoft provides. So if you have to check like what kind of identity providers Microsoft provides for the Power Pages side, you can simply log into the uh, Microsoft Power Apps application head over to the Power Apps Maker Studio portal and then you can in the left panel there is a setup and then you can go to the identity provider and check the list of all the identity provider provides. Yeah. All right. Now how this authentication process works. So I just wanted to uh, give you a very high level understanding. So whenever you log into the Power Pages site, you click on the sign in. 
you redirect to the Azure ADB 2C page, how the thing works in the background, right? Because if you know how the things working in the background, how the components are being used, how the resources are being utilized, you will be better. Uh, uh, you will understand it better, like how to configure the Azure ADB 2C setup. Yeah. So because it will help you to investigate the issues if you are facing some challenges or if you are facing some issues, right? So if I talk about the process between Azure AD B2C and the Power Pages, the step one is user access the Power Pages site. So that is the first step. You navigate to your Power Pages site, right? And hit the sign in option. So this is my Power Pages site uh, header where you can you know where I can log into the sorry, not the login. I can simply head over to my portal application and hit sign in. So that is the step one. So once you hit sign in, you will be redirected to the Azure AD B2C authentication, right? So there are two things here. If you have set up multiple identity provider in your portal, you will not be redirected directly to the Azure AD B2C login page or the authentication page. You will be first presented all the available enable identity providers like Facebook, Twitter or Google, whatever you know IDB you have enabled. Then you need to manually click on the uh, respective uh, identity provider in order to log into that application. But if you set a particular identity provider as a default option, then you will be directly redirected to that particular application. So step two is whenever you hit sign in, I'm assuming you have set Azure AD B2C as a default identity provider in your Power Pages site. I'll show you that as well in the demo part. So you will be redirected to the Azure AD B2C authentication. Now the interesting part is that whenever we, whenever you will be redirected to the Azure AD B2C login or the sign up page, there are a couple of information you send it as a request, like client ID, redirect URL that I just talked about. Yeah. So you can see here there are these are the parameters value you send it in the URL whenever you make the request to the Azure AD B2C. The first thing is the issuer. So issuer is nothing as, a, as I just explained to you in the previous slide. Issuer is nothing it's just going to issue the token on the successful authentication, right? And this issuer we're going to get from the Azure AD B2C. So in a short while we're going to see like how we can get this issuer URL. The second is the client ID. So whenever you integrate your Power Pages site with your Azure AD B2C, you need to register your application, and this is the unique ID of that application. Redirect URI is basically once your authentication is successful, you will be redirected to this particular URL. So that is nothing; it's just in a Power Pages site URL. Response type is nothing; it's just simply a code ID token. That means. Your authentication is basically OAuth based. Your authentication is basically token based. So whenever you're successful authentication, whenever your identity is verified from the B2C, you will get the access token from the Azure AD B2C as a response. The scope uh, is basically the open ID. The scope basically decide. So you can check the next slide uh, in order to understand the, the significance of each parameter. So here you, scope means whenever you make the request, uh, during the Azure AD B2C authentication, it is specify the resources or action that application intends to access on behalf of the user. Like what kind of resources you want to access from that particular Azure AD B2C. So if I if I'm sending a scope as open ID, that means I'm using it for the authentication purpose. If I'm sending the parameter uh, scope as profile, that means I'm accessing the profile information of user from Active Directory B2C. Yeah, a state a state is basically used to maintain the state between the authentication request and the response. It helps prevent cross site request for C attack. OK, so by allowing the application to include a unique and non guessable value in the request. So whenever you make the request from the portal to the Azure AD B2C, there is a unique value sent in the state. So you can see here in the state, there is a unique value get sent. And the same thing you send that uh, in the N1 parameter as well. Now, what is the significance of N1? So this parameter is a random value generated by the application. Each time, whenever you're making a request, it basically generate a random value. 
and included in the authentication request. And it is basically used to mitigate the replay attacks by the ensuring that token return by the B2C are fresh and have not been tampered. Right. So these are the different different parameter. I'm going to share the slide with you after the session so you can have a look at it. Like what is the significance of each parameter that you are passing it through the uh, while making the request? OK, OK, so once you make the request and you will be redirected to the B2C screen, the step three is that you is you are going to enter the credentials, your Azure B2C uh, credential username and password. So if you are not using as your username and password, you can either use uh, the external identity provider card, Facebook, Twitter and Google as well. Now, once you enter your credential, it will send it to the Azure AD B2C for the verification purpose. So that is the step number three. Now, step number four is if your uh, Azure AD B2C is going to verify your credentials that you have entered in the login page, it will check in the Active Directory. Uh, Azure AD B2C directory whether those credentials are correct. If those credentials are correct, it will generate an authentication token that is also called a JWT token. OK, and this token uh, along with that token, it will redirect user to the redirect URL. So this redirect URL plays a crucial role because whenever your authentication is successful, the Azure AD B2C will redirect user to the redirect URL along with the generated token. OK, now once the power pages site gets that token, it again verify that whether this token has been generated from the expected issuer or not. OK, so this is the step number five where power pages site receive the token and then again verify it from the uh, Azure AD B2C whether it's, you know, uh, uh, whether this token is issued from the expected uh, issuer or it is not being tampered, right? So this is kind of verification it, it actually does. Now, once the verification is done, when the token is verified and the token is valid, then Power Pages grant the access to the requested page or the functionality, and the user is now authenticated and can try it with your application, right? So this is how the whole process works in the background whenever you hit the sign in option and enter your credentials, right? You don't get to see these kind of things what happening in the background, but I'm just wanted to know at least uh, from the technical perspective so that at least you know like how things are working in the background. So uh, if anything goes wrong, if it, nothing is working, then at least you can investigate that that in which particular step it is failing. Yeah. All, all right. Now let's talk about uh, the two business scenarios that uh, I'm going to demonstrate it today. So the first business scenario is uh, the new customer portal authentication flow. OK, so this is one of the most common uh, use business use cases and one of the most simplest use cases where uh, uh, how you set up uh, the Azure AD B2C in your Power Pages site. And whenever any new customer wants to, you know, uh, log into the portal using Azure AD B2C. How you gonna how how you gonna set up that right? So for that, first of all, uh, let me head over to the Power Pages site here. So here, first of all, I will log into the Power Apps Maker portal, or you can call it as a Power Apps homepage, and then you can click on the website. If you don't see this option in the left panel, you can click on More, and just simply pin this option here so that you can see it in the left panel. So once you click on website, I already have a site called Power Pages Demo, so I've already opened that. And in the in the left panel, if you click on the setup, you will be seeing this option called Identity Provider. And here you will see the list of all the identity provided that uh, Microsoft provides or the Power Pages site provides. Local sign-in is not recommended uh, for the production use. You can use it for the testing purpose or for your development environment, but it is not recommended for the uh, production uses. So Active Directory B2C, Azure AD B2C is one of the default, uh, is, is one of the recommended authentication option for the Power Pages site authentication. And the rest of the things you can also use it. So you just need to simply, you know, for example, you need to enable the Facebook, so you can just click here, edit the configuration, and you need to provide the necessary details like client ID, secret key, and all, and just save it, right? And uh, if I talk about the Azure AD B2C, you need to click here first, and then provider name, you can provide the meaningful name here. 
and there are a couple of settings or uh, the terminologies that I've already explained to you in the slide deck. The first thing is the authority. Authority is nothing, it's just an issuer. Okay, so issuer is nothing, it's just uh, uh, the URL. You will get it from your identity provider that is Azure AD B2C. And this we're going to get it from the Azure AD B2C. I'll show you uh, in a while that how you can get this URL. The significance of this URL is to get the token, right? Client ID, so you need to register an app in the Active Directory, B2C directory, so that uh, this portal will be linked with your Azure B2C tenant. So whenever you make the request, it will identify that the request is coming from this client ID or this particular Power Pages site, so that you will get the authentication token. Redirect URI, once your uh, authentication is done, you will be redirected to this particular URL after successful authentication. Yeah, and here are a couple of uh, policies ID. Policies ID is nothing, it's just in user flows. So whatever user flows you are using, you just need to provide the unique name here. So I'm currently using sign up, sign in flow. That means the sign up process and the sign in process. So this is just the unique name of that. And this is the password reset flow. So this two process, I'm going to use it. So that's why I've used uh, uh, the name here. And here you need to finally provide the valid issuer. Valid issuer is nothing. It's just a comma separated of whatever policies or the user flows you are using. So if I copy it here and if I go to the notepad. You can see it's a comma separated to issuer URL. This is for the sign up and this is for the password reset. Now how are you going to set up these things and uh, you will collect this value from the B2C? So for that, first of all, you need to head over to your Azure AD B2C. Okay, so you need to make sure that uh, when you log into the Active Directory account, uh, you need to have a different Azure AD B2C tenant. So if you don't have that Azure AD B2C tenant available, first of all, you need to create that. So you need to have the appropriate uh, subscription for that. So I've already set up the Azure AD B2C in my Active Directory tenant. So if you don't have, you can simply search this. Uh, if you can just go to the Microsoft Azure, click on the create a resource. And if you can search for Azure Directory, Directory B2C, you will be redirected to this page. Click here and then you can start doing creation. So once you create that, it will it will ask a couple of configuration details that you can fill that up. Yep. So as you can see here, I have uh, already created a B2C tenant for me. So let me head over to that. Shit. Right. So this is the Azure AD B2C tenant. So once the Azure AD B2C tenant is created, you need to open that. So you will be redirected to this screen. And here you will find a lot of uh, uh, resources like uh, app registrations, identity providers, branding, user attributes, users, user flow. So, so the most important resources we have already discussed in the slide deck. So the first thing that you have to do is, is the app registration for your Power Pages site. So to do the app registration, click on the new registration. Here you need to provide your application name for example i am providing power get b2c app select this option called account in any identity provider you can use it and then you need to provide the redirect url here so redirect url uh, you will get it from the portal so you can see here so this will always be the unique and this will remain same for all the power pages site so you need to replace this with, with your power pages site and then you need to copy this so just copy this and paste it here, click on web and just provide this like that, right? And then just click, just make sure that you are enabling this grant admin action, uh, admin consent, and then click on the register. So once you click on register, you will be redirected to a page so since I've already registered an application, so I'm not gonna do that again. So this is the application I've already registered. So once the application get registered, you get a unique application ID in the overview section so that you can copy it and just paste it here under the client ID. As you can see here, 
the seven says the application ID, I copied here. Yeah. So this is the first thing client ID and redirect URL is done. Now, how you set up the user flow? OK, so the first thing that you're going to do is. Uh, click on the app registration again and click on the user flows. Now, if you can see in the user flow, there are different different kinds of authentication process that you can use. So if you click on the new user flow, if you don't have. Uh, if you don't have already created the existing one, so you can see there are different kind of uh, flows available. The first is sign up and sign in. The second is profile editing, password reset, sign in and the sign up. Yeah, it depends on your business requirement that what kind of user flow you want to set up. So if you want to allow user to sign up and sign in both, right? So so that if you use it, if the user clicks on the sign up, they can do the registrations. They can provide the username, uh, the sorry, the email address, the job title, city address and other things. So you can provide the sign up and sign in option. If you don't want user to sign up on the portal, they can only log into the portal. Then you can provide the sign in flow as well. Yeah. So I've already created three flows. The one is sign up, sign in. So sign up, sign in. The second is the sign in flow and the third is the password reset flow. So the, the three flows I'm going to use. Now, how you decide like which kind of user flow you're going to use it. It also depends on your business requirements. OK, so for example, if I talk about like uh, the in the use case one, I want to set up. Uh, the Azure AD B2C flow for new customer. That means uh, I want to allow user to sign up on the portal, right? So because it's a new customer, that means there is no data was contact available for that particular customer. So they will be. Uh, so they need to sign up first, then only they will be logged into the application, right? So I need to create the sign up sign in flow for that application. So once you create the sign up and sign in flow, there are a couple of things you need to uh, set up here. The first thing in the properties. Type of method, so this is basically the multi factor authentication you need to set up. So if you select email, then you will get the the token or the the OTP on the email, you can choose the SMS or the phone call also, or you can choose the Microsoft app as well. Yeah. MFA enforcement, you can also decide whether you want to turn it off or you want to, you know, always on or the conditional access as well. OK, conditional access, you can, uh, you know, uh, you can provide the conditional access policy to restrict user like who can uh, who can log into the Azure DB2C or who can log into your uh, portal applications, right? Sometimes you want to, you know, block a particular region of customer. So for that purpose, you can use the conditional access policies as well. And there are a lot of list of properties that you can also learn from here. Password configuration related settings is also there. Like, uh, do you want user to force forcefully reset the password? Password complexity, you can also set it. And this is one of the preview feature that you can enable the capture as well on the sign up and the sign in. So this is just a property section where you can enable or disable just simply turn in and turn off the features. That's it. Yeah. Identity provider. So right now I'm going to use the email sign up option. That means you will get the username and password pop up. So where you can provide your email address that could be your Gmail or Yahoo and any email you can enter. Just make sure that it should be valid so that you can get the uh, you can get the OTP on that uh, you know email address. You can enable the social identity provider here as well. The Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. So let's suppose if I select those options and save it. So that means whenever I will sign up or sign in on the portal, I will get to see these identity providers as well. All right. User attributes. So user attributes basically. Uh, these are the list of attributes uh, that you want to show it on the sign up page, right? So whenever user is sign up, signing up on the portal or through the Azure AD B2C sign up page, what fields they want to see? So email address, first name, last name, a job title. So I want to show only four fields, email address, given name and title. So you can create uh, the new fields as well. OK, and you can create uh, you can enable or disable the other fields as well. So if you want to create some custom attributes, you can click on manual user accounts and click add and this will allow you to create the uh, the custom attributes as well. Yeah, so there are different 
three types of data type you can create here. So if you feel that any particular attribute is not present here, you can create your own one. Right. We go back. So this I'm going to discuss it in the next session, like API connectors and all. The another important part is uh, if I go to the another user flow, yeah. So another important part is the application claim, right? User attribute decide what are the attributes you want to show on the sign up page, and application claim is basically decide whenever the authentication is successful from the Azure AD B2C, what kind of parameters or what kind of attributes you want to return it from the Azure AD B2C to the Power Pages site, yeah. Because sometimes you want like uh, whenever the user uh, authentication is successful, you want to auto populate the data that user has already filled up on the sign up page, right? Like email address, given name, job titles and all so that whenever you will be redirected to the power pages profile page, you don't need to fill that information, you know, manually. You can auto populate that information. So this information you can send that as a claim whenever authentication is successful. So we call it as application claims, right? Now, every claim has a specific unique name, same as logical name or the schema name of Dataverse attributes, right? So if you want to see like what kind of uh, unique name it provides, you can simply run the user flow, okay? And when you click on run user flow, you get to see this URL. Click on this URL. And here there are a couple of things you will uh, capture. The first is issuer URL. So this is the URL you need to capture. And then paste it here. OK, so you can see this is the same URL that I have copied from this particular location. Now, whatever URL you will paste it in the authority section, Whenever you will click on the sign in on the portal, it will take you to this particular page, right? So make sure if you want to redirect user to the sign up page, you just paste here the sign up issuer URL. So this is the sign up issuer URL. And if you want to redirect user to the. Yeah, so if you want user to uh, redirect to the sign in. Uh, flow then in that case you can simply just it. let me close this for now yeah so let's say if you want to redirect users to the sign in flow not to the sign up flow right so go to the user flow open the sign in flow click on run user flow and then click here then in that case we need to copy the sign in flow you can see this is the sign in flow that means in this flow, you will not get the sign up option. OK, so in which particular page you want user to take, you just need to provide that URL here. So this is called the authority URL. I want user to take to the sign up page, so that's why I provided this URL. OK, so this is all about the uh, issuer URL. Now, here uh, in the, say if I go back in the sign up flow, So we want to see the claims it is actually returning. So here, as I told you, like in the application claim, we have email address, given name, job title. So if you run that user flow, click here, you will see the job title, family name, and given name, and the email. So these are the four claims it is returning. So we're going to use that uh, in the Power Pages to map the Azure AD B2C attribute to the database attribute. OK, so where we can do that. So if you go to the Power Pages AD, AD, AD B2C configuration page, if I go to the additional settings, there is a registration claim mapping option. OK, so registration claim mapping basically, uh, it is basically map uh, the sign up attributes that you're going to show it on the Azure AD sign up page with the contact uh, attributes, right? So how you want to provide that? So this is the logical name of uh, the contact table attribute job title, and this is the the JWT claim name that I'm using it here. So this is the job title, right? So if you want to map the sign up field attribute to the Dataverse contact table attribute, you need to provide this in the comma separated here. 
you don't need to provide it for the first name, last name and the email address because it does it happens automatically. But apart from that, for example, if you are if you want to map the city address, postcode and other fields, then you need to provide the comma separated name. Just make sure this is the logical name of the dataverse contact table attribute and this is you're going to get it from this claim. You can capture it from here, right? All right. So what is the login claim mapping then? So login claim mapping means uh, this is basically uh, the registration claim mapping will always map the attribute at the time of registration, right? So the user will not register every time. They will register only first time, right? But if any information is getting updated in the Azure AD B2C, how you want to make sure that that information gets synced with the contact table attribute. So in that case, you can use the login claims mapping, right? For example, like in the Azure AD B2C account, you change your job title, right? Now this job title has been changed after the registration is done. So that means this will not sync in the Dataverse table, contact table, right? So when you will provide the same mapping in the login claims mapping, it will ensure so whenever you will log in next time, the updated information will get synced from the Azure AD B2C profile to your uh, Dataverse contact profile. OK. All right, so this is uh, the user flow is all about. You can also run this user flow from here directly. For example, this is the sign up sign in flow and you want to see like how this uh, user flow works. So you can simply click here. And it will show you how uh, this user flow looks like or how the login page looks like. OK, so this is how I actually customize this uh, sign up page or the sign in page of the Azure AD B2C that I'm going to cover in the next session. But you can simply uh, understand like how, if you want to see like how this login or sign up page uh, appears, you can run this user flow from here. All right. So this is how you can set up different flows. Now the interesting part is here the page layout. So you you see like I I have customized this page. I have changed the branding and everything. So that can also possible using this page layout option. So here there is a unified sign up or sign in page. When I click here, I just change this towel to yes. And when I change this towel to yes, I can provide the the URL of my own HTML template. Right, so that the default sign up and sign in uh, page will be replaced with this custom HTML. So this I'm going to discuss in the next session. Yeah. All right. Now, so let's uh, do a quick demo of uh, the new registration process. OK, so let me head over to the portal. So I'm going to portal management tab. So I'm going to first demonstrate like how the new customer authentication flow will work. OK, so. So in the case of new customer, uh, there will be no contact available in the Dataverse. OK, so for example, I am going to use. Uh, I'm going to use this email address. Or my name. As a new customer, so I'm just going to delete this for now. Sorry. All right, so there is no contact with email a Srivastava 421 at gmail.com. So being a new customer, I will be first of all redirecting to the power pages site. Because in case of new customer, there will be no contact present in the data wars. It should be created uh, using. Uh, sorry. It should be created using uh, the Azure AD B2C sign up flow. All right, so this is the landing page. So if I click sign in. So this is the step one. Whenever I click sign in, it takes me to the Azure AD B2C sign up page. Why it takes me to the sign up page? Because I have already configured here. 
that it takes me to the sign up page. So it depends on what kind of authority I have provided here. So in the issuer URL, I have provided the sign up page. That's why it took me to this page. Now, when I copy this URL, you get to see all the components that I've described in my slide deck. Here, the important thing is about it sends the client ID that I'm using it in the identity provider here, right? It is the client ID redirect URL. So that is also there in the redirect URL. And this is the issuer sign up sign in V2 2.0. So this is basically coming from this authority. So all the information that I've discussed uh, in the slide deck, it is sending all this information that, okay? All right, so if I go here and uh, click on the sign up now, because I am a new user, I don't have the credential yet, so I cannot sign in directly. So click on the sign up now. So I have not customized the sign up uh, page, so it, it takes me to the default page. Here I can provide email address. So I just wanted to make sure that there is no user exist with this email address. Otherwise, I will get the error message. So let me check and delete that user. All right, so I don't have user of this email address already. OK, I can simply provide the password here. And here you can see like uh, these are all the fields that I've enabled it in the user attribute section, right? So I can show you that again as well. So in the sign up flow, I have enabled three user attribute to be appeared on the sign up page. Oh, yeah, email address, given name, job title, and surname. Yeah, so you can see all those options here. Email address, first name. So let me give this name, job title. Let me call it name. So okay. yeah. Now I have mapped this architect because first name and last name will automatically map first name last name and email address will automatically map the job title and the other attributes will not map but since i have provided this mapping option here so this job title should also get mapped here so once i click on create it takes me to the profile page and uh, i'm expecting that it should auto populate the details from the Azure AD B2C profile page. So now you can see it took, uh, it basically took the first name from the B2C sign up page, last name. The job title is not being appeared here. So let me click update. And uh, yeah, so go back to the contacts. And if I open it, I should see the job title as well. Yeah. So you can see the job title is coming from the mapping and the first name, last name, and the email address is already pulled from. Yeah. So this is how the 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 new customer sign up flow work. So every customer will you know come to the portal. They will click on the sign in. They will redirect it to the sign up page, and they will be then uh, registered on the portal. The second uh, 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 use case is the existing portal customer. OK, so this is one of the most common use cases where your contact is already there in the Dataverse, how you can invite them. OK, so for example, now I am going to delete this. And uh, I am going to create this as a normal contact in Dataverse. OK, so I'm just going to create uh, same email address and save it. So let me delete. OK, so one more thing. As soon as you you have done the sign up from the Power Pages site, a contact gets created in the Dataverse and a user gets created in the B2C directory. So if I go to the users, you get to see a new user gets created here. So you can see there is a H was to four to one. So there is a new user gets created here in the B2C directory. So now I'm deleting this and going to discuss the existing user flow. So now I don't have any user in the Active Directory with the email address, A. Srivastav. And uh, I'm going to, I have already created a contact here with the email address and all. Now, now I have to invite this contact because the contact is already present. 
the user should not sign up from the portal now because if the user will sign up from the portal, a new contact will get created. So I don't want to create the duplicate contact. Instead, I want to link my existing contact that is already there in the dataverse with the new contact. So in that case, there are two options that I can use. The first thing I, I need to first remove this sign up option. OK, because if I will provide the sign up option, user will uh, anyways can go to the sign up option. So how I can block the sign up option and allow user to sign in only. So first thing I need to change the sign up flow with the sign in flow. I go here. Copy the user flows. Now I'm not going to use the sign up one. I'm going to use the sign in. Click on the run user flow. And then click here to capture the issuer URL. So this is the URL I'm going to capture and just going to replace here. Yeah, so I don't need to replace only here. I need to go to the valid issuer and I need to replace it here as well. Remove this and here to make sure that both the issuer is separated with the comma. Yeah, so that's it. So no other changes I need to do here. Now instead this sign up and sign in, I need to copy the name of this sign in as well. Yeah, so just go here and replace this sign in policy ID and save it. All right, so now I have changed uh, sign up flow to the sign in flow. Just close it. Now set this as default. So this is uh, the setting I was talking about. So if you have the list of identity provider, you can set the particular identity provider to default. By doing that, if you simply click on the sign in, you will be redirected to that particular sign in provider. If you don't do that, you need to select the identity provider from the list of the identity provider. So if I go to the identity provider, click on sync. All right, so now so now in that case, my contact is already there. If I go to the sign in. OK, so let me first show you like how you can automatically create the B2C account in the Active Directory B2C tenant. Yeah, because in this case, the contact is already there. So for that, I have already created a flow. To automatically create the B2C uh, users, because in most of the cases, you already have the contacts available in the Dataverse and you want to migrate the user, you want to invite the user. So there is a flow I have created called create B2C user and it triggers when I turn on this flag. So I have created a flag on the contact called allow portal access. So it's up to you like how you want to, you know, uh, trigger this particular power automate. I have created manually. You can you can trigger it automatically as well. Sometimes you can create a registration form on the portal as well and uh, user can request from the portal directly and you can trigger it from there as well. So it's up to you. So if I click on edit. So this is just a trigger point when allow portal access value is true and there are a couple of uh, variables I have created. You can just ignore this first name, last name and email. I can delete them later on. But there are a couple of co configuration uh, the variables I have used. The first is the token user. OK, the second is the token password. Client ID, secret key. And the tenant ID. So what I'm going to do is. Last time I was. I was creating the B2C users using the sign up flow, but this time since my contact is already there. I want to create this automatically. So there are two major steps here. The first thing I need to get the access token. OK, using the graph API 
from the Azure Active Directory tenant and using that token, I'm going to create a Azure AD B2C user. So these are the two major steps. OK, so in order to get the access token, there are a couple of information I need to get it. The first is the client ID. The second is the scope. The third is uh, the client secret and the fourth is the grant type. OK, so I'm going to share this flow with you. Uh, I, I'll share with the vector probably or will upload this flow on my uh, repository uh, where from where you can download it uh, uh, and you're imported in your organization. But this client ID and secret key is different from the Azure AD B2C uh, app that we have registered previously. So if I head over to my Active Directory here, as you can see, like one app we have already registered for our portal, and that application is uh, Power. So that was that application that is associated with the portal. So we are not going to use that. We are going to create a new application in order to use the Microsoft Graph API. OK, so for Microsoft Graph API, I've already created a app that is Power Guide B2C App Graph API. This app is quite different from the previous app because this app is specifically going to use to perform the operation in the Active Directory using Graph API. OK, so if you have to provide uh, the operations like create, update, delete on the Azure AD B2C directory, to create user or delete user, you need to provide the API permission here. OK, so in the API permission. If you click on the add a permission. Click on Microsoft Graph. Click on application permission. You need to provide certain permission at the application level. So that is application read write all. I think that is not mandatory. You need to provide on the directory level specifically. So if you can see at the directory level, there is a directory read write all. So this privilege is required in order to perform this app. To create or delete the user from the uh, Azure AD B2C tenant, right? So this app configuration I'm going to use in my flow. So if I go to the overview, there is an app ID. There is a tenant ID and I've already created the client secret from here. B2C app, yeah, and these three details I have used in my, my flow client ID. And this is the scope that you have to hard code it. So this this is going to be the common for every uh, graph API call uh, to interact with the B2C uh, users. You can keep this information uh, in the environment variables in the uh, real time projects, but I have just hard coded for the demonstration and this client secret that we have copied. And the grant type should be the client credentials. So once you do that and the tenant ID you will be passing here. So once you do that, you will get the access token. Now using this token, you need to parse that token because once you make the call, you get the token. You need to parse JSON in order to extract that uh, token information. And then you need to use that token to create the Azure AD B2C user. OK, so here you need to use this URL called uh, B2C, uh, sorry, users. Content type is application JSON authorization bearer, and you have to pass the access token that you got from the previous step. Yeah, and this is one of the most important information while creating the, the user in the B2C tenant. The first thing is the account enable that is that is uh, you can ignore display name is basically the name of the user that you want to create. User principal name is uh, this is going to be the, the domain name of your uh, tenant. OK, your tenant specific domain will be different and this is the name of uh, the user. Email address, password profile in the password profile section. You need to make sure that the force change password next sign in uh, attribute to true, right? So this will ensure so whenever user will log in first time, right? Because we are going to disable the sign up option. So whenever the user is going to log in first time, they will be redirected to the they will be asked to change their password. OK, so whenever they will uh, enter their email address. They will click on next, then they need to provide their uh, password so that that password we are sending them uh, from the power automate itself. So this setting is quite important. You need to set it true and then you need to generate the random password here and the email. If you can see what I'm sending it. 
I'm just sending it the portal link. So this portal link will redirect user to the sign in page. This is the username, email address and the temporary password. So when the user is already there or the contact is already present in the in the dataverse, the first option to invite the user or to link that contact or the user with the dataverse contact is by creating a temporary password and sending them invite by setting the property for change password sign into true. OK, so let me check this first. Sync this. Okay, so now you can see uh, uh, there is no sign up option here because I have changed the user flow to sign in here. Okay. okay. Well, I will first go to the contact because I'm not going to use that first. I'm going to the contact here and uh, allow the portal access. So if I turn on this to yes and click on save, my flow will trigger. So if I go here and check how the flow is working. Okay, so it's running success. So if I click here, <clears throat> you can see uh, this has generated a token here, access token, and this token I am passing it in the par JSON step and just using this token in this particular step. So this is the display name. It pulled out from the dataverse contact table, and uh, you need to make sure like this user principal name. This name should be uh, that could be anything your first name and the combination of your first name and last name, but this will remain your domain name. OK, you can't change this. So you need to replace this with your domain name. Otherwise you will get an error message and this email that you're going to use it to log into your portal. And this is uh, the force change setting. I'm generating the random password here. I can share this flow with you. Uh, so this is uh, how I'm getting uh, the random password. Or you can generate the temporary password. OK, now I should expect uh, the email, but I can directly copy it from here. So this is the URL I'm going to use. OK. So either I can use this URL or I can directly go from this link as well. So, so this is the URL. Sign in and hit this URL. The user will receive this URL on their email address. So they will click on this link and they will be redirected to this page. Now here they need to provide the same credentials that we have shared with them on the email. So this is the email address I'm going to use. And the password. Right now, if I click sign in. You will see I will be redirected to the your password has expired. Please change it to a new password. OK, why this new screen is appeared because I have set this settings while creating a user. So that setting is force change password next sign in. OK. If you don't set this setting, uh, this is going to be the default password of the user, but I don't want to do that. I want user to change their own password so I can use the same and I can set this. Continue. Now in this case, 
this is going to link with my existing portal contact because my contact is already there, right? So you can see like I'll be redirected to the profile page and my information has been automatically popped up from the contact details that I've already stored in my Dataverse, right? So this is the one way how you can uh, invite your existing contact details or the existing contact uh, to the uh, to the portal. Sometimes uh, the user uh, has this concern like uh, we don't want to share the password, uh, even the temporary password on the email. We want user to generate their own password, right? So in that case, what you can do it, there is one more option in that case to invite the user to use the password reset option. So there is a third user flow that I have created. You can use that feature as well. So let me quickly show that as well. So go to the password reset, run user flow, click here. Okay, so now copy this issue or URL now because you want user to redirect to this particular screen. Now go here, go to the identity provider, b to c default. Now in the authority, replace with password reset. And the valid issuer URL, replace with password reset. And here also, you need to copy the password reset. Policy ID, replace with here. Save it. OK, now go here. Set that default. This is some kind of bug. I would say like whenever we make any changes in the B2C, the default option gets automatically changed. So let me sync this. OK. Now what I'm going to do it, I'm going to delete this contact again. Go to the Active Directory and delete that user again. All right. Now I'm going to create a new contact again. Same details. OK, so now there is a third scenario, uh, not a third scenario. It is the same scenario. I, I've already had the contact in the Dataverse. Uh, I, and I want to uh, invite this contact and link this with the new sign up process. But instead of sending uh, the temporary password, I can send them uh, the link directly or password reset. OK, so in that case, Let me refresh this. If we click sign in. OK, so now you can see uh, you will be redirected to the password reset page. OK, so instead of uh, using this particular option where you are setting the force password reset, generating username and password and then sending the username and password, what you can do it, you can directly share this URL with your uh, customer. So this is the URL you can use it, not this URL. Uh, this URL I'm going to use. Oh, shit. If, if that, if this B2C registration okay. app is set as the default. Would it work or oh, you talk about the, how to get to the password reset page straight? Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so for the password reset, you can share this URL in the portal invitation email directly. So when the user will click on this URL like this, they will be directly redirected to this uh, password reset page. And, and uh, of course, you will send the email address in their email. And here you, you see there is no temporary password, right? So user will click here, send password code.
I need to provide the token 5539733. Verify code. Continue. The account will not be provided. An account could not be found for the provided user ID. Oh, yes. I think I missed one step here. So what I'm going to do it. Because of course I have to create that uh, user account in the Active Directory B2C account first, right? So instead of setting this value to true, let me set it false, okay? And save it. So this is the only setting I'm going to do it in case of password reset. So in that case, you don't need to send the random password, but uh, I'm just keeping it as is. I'm not deleting it. Okay, now turn into on, save. Because in both the cases, uh, when your contact is present in the Dataverse contact, you, you need to first create the user in the B2C uh, directory. And then it's up to you whether you want to send them uh, the link with the uh, email address and the temporary password and ask them to change the password in the first login. And the second option is uh, directly send them the password reset link so that they don't need to enter their temporary password. Come on. Okay, let me save it. Show it, okay. Sometimes this flow takes time to trigger. Okay. OK, so the flow has triggered now, and if I head over to the B2C account, you can see a new user got created. Yeah, so now if I go here. Sign in. And provide the email address that I received on my email, send verification code. So it's zero eight seven. Continue. Yeah, so now you can see uh, I will be redirected to the new password. So that means I don't need to enter any temporary password and all, and I don't need to send uh, the user the temporary password on their email. So I can set my own password after directly entering the email and then continue. So if I do this, since my contact is already there in the in the in the data verse, it automatically linked to that and. Uh, the information will automatically pop up on the profile page. So now you can see information is there. I click update. And if I go here and refresh the page, you can see in the web authentication section, the identity provided is updated. Right, so basically in the existing portal customer, there are two options. The first is uh, you send the sign-in link and ask user, uh, to change their password on first login by setting the uh, by setting by changing this by changing the setting force 
password reset while creating the user. And the second option is if you don't want to send the user uh, the temporary password in the email, you can send the password reset link, right? And by doing that, user needs to enter the email address and they can simply change their own password. So that's it. So that's it for now. I know like uh, I took 30 minutes uh, more than the expected time, but uh, there are a couple of more interesting stuff that, that I'm going to share it in my next session. So, so the third requirement is how the existing B2C user uh, portal authentication flow works because right now we have seen like the contact is present in the dataverse, but if the contact is not present in the dataverse, but the user is present in the B2C directory, then how the authentication process will work. Fourth requirement, how we're going to migrate the IDPs to the Azure AD B2C and the fifth one, how you can customize the branding of, you know, the Azure AD B2C page layout. So that is also one of the most important requirement. Yeah. So thank you so much, everyone, uh, for your time. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask me. Thank you. Over to you, Victor. Oh, Victor had to disappear to the conference. Okay. I just <laughs> wanted to say, up it. That was amazing. Like absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> really, thank you so really, much. Really, really good. Honestly, thank you. Thank you. See you guys <laughs> Thank you. Yes, we'll definitely see you Great on session. Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. If you okay, if you have any questions, I can just read through all the comments and can respond it. Yeah, oh, I think I think I've sort of covered. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see you Thursday. That was just incredible. Thank you so much. Honestly, that was great. <laughs> Blown away. Perfect. <laughs> See you soon, Arfit. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a nice Thank you. day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheers, buddy.